In the hushed corners of our memories, there exists a realm where the ordinary blurs into the extraordinary place where the line between dusk and dawn is shrouded in whispers, and where the shadows harbor secrets darker than the night itself. For those fortunate enough to have crossed paths with the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, this ethereal journey remains etched in the corridors of recollection. Do you remember that very first encounter, when the haunting tale of a small town enshrouded in an otherworldly darkness unfolded before your eyes? The chilling suspense that held you captive, the palpable fear that gnawed at your curiosity these are the fragments that come alive in the recesses of your mind. Perhaps it was the eerie silence that settled over the town as dusk fell, or the insidious way the undead emerged from the shadows, sinking their teeth into the hearts of unsuspecting souls. Maybe it was that heart-stopping moment when a character you had grown attached to faced the abyss of their fate, or the spine-tingling sensation that crept along your skin as you navigated each twist and turn of the narrative. Whatever it was, Salem's Lot conjured a unique blend of terror and fascination, leaving an indelible mark on your reminiscences. And now, as we tread down the memory lane, let's illuminate some arcane knowledge about this classic creation. Unearth the secrets of its inception, delve into the minds of its creators, and unravel the curious connections that tie the real world to the supernatural tapestry spun within its episodes. From curious anecdotes to intriguing behind-the-scenes tidbits, these random facts will breathe new life into the enigma of Salem's lot. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on this spectral expedition into the heart of television's chilling past. Explore the unexpected, embrace the enigmatic, and reimagine the fear that once gripped your very soul. Because in the end, it's not just a story, it's a journey into the unknown, a journey that began with that first shiver of excitement, as the world of Salem's lot unfolded before you, before you, before you. In the eerie world of the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, a chilling connection lies beneath the surface, entwining the characters in ways even the darkest imagination couldn't conjure. Clarissa K. Mason, the actress who brought Marjorie Glick to life, shared more than just scenes with her on-screen co-star James Mason, who portrayed the enigmatic Richard Straker. In a twist worthy of a Stephen King tale, Clarissa was, in fact, the real-life wife of James Mason. This intriguing alignment of fiction and reality adds an extra layer of mystique to their on-screen chemistry. Meanwhile, the enigmatic figure of Ben Mears, the series' protagonist, was conceptualized with a specific face in mind. None other than Ben Gazzara was the muse behind Stephen King's creation. As the story unfolded, Gazzara's essence seemed to linger around every corner of the eerie town, his spirit transcending the boundaries between the page and the screen. Amid the darkness that shrouded Salem's lot, composer Harry Suckman's haunting melodies pierced through the night. The series marked his final composition before his 1984 passing, a swan song that resonates in the corridors of horror history. The score's haunting beauty garnered an Emmy nomination, a testament to Suckman's ability to transform fear into auditory art. In the annals of television horror, Salem's Lot stands as a chilling masterpiece. Beyond its supernatural narrative, the connections that intertwine the cast and creators mirror the eerie web spun by Stephen King himself. As the years pass, these insights into the making of the series only serve to deepen its enigmatic allure. With the echoes of Suckman's score and the haunting images of the lot still lingering, we find ourselves drawn into the timeless vortex of a town where darkness never truly sleeps. Reggie Nalder's disappointment with Salem's Lot revealed in a candid interview with Fangoria magazine. Reggie Nalder, known for his chilling portrayal of the vampire Barlow in the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, expressed his disappointment with the final cut of the film. Nalder revealed that several scenes showcasing his character as the malevolent vampire were left on the cutting room floor, leading to a sense of unfulfillment with the end result. The revelation sheds light on the creative decisions made during the production process, indicating that even a seasoned actor like Nalder can have differing opinions on the final outcome. Nalder's portrayal of Barlow, though limited in screen time, left an indelible mark on the horror genre and the collective psyche of viewers. Despite Nalder's reservations, Salem's Lot remains a cult classic, drawing audiences into its eerie world of darkness and terror. The miniseries, based on Stephen King's novel of the same name, captivated viewers with its chilling atmosphere and unforgettable performances. Nalder's interview offers a unique glimpse behind the scenes of a production that has continued to haunt.
and captivate audiences over the years. His disappointment underscores the challenges of adapting complex narratives for the screen and the delicate balance between artistic vision and commercial considerations. Even though some of my best work ended up on the cutting room floor, I'm proud to have been part of such an iconic production, Nalda remarked in the interview. His words remind us that the creative process is often a blend of collaboration and compromise, yielding results that can both satisfy and leave artists yearning for more. As fans continue to revisit Salem's lot, Reggie Nelder's candid reflections provide a deeper layer of understanding, allowing us to appreciate the complexities that lie beneath the surface of this timeless horror masterpiece. Horror masterpiece. Horror masterpiece. Writer Paul Monash's connection to Salem's lot in Carrie in 1979. The TV miniseries Salem's Lot brought Stephen King's spine-chilling novel to life, captivating audiences with its eerie portrayal of a town plagued by vampires. However, what's intriguing is the creative thread that linked this miniseries to another iconic horror adaptation. Paul Monash, the mind behind Salem's Lot, had already delved into King's realm when he produced Brian De Palma's Carrie in 1976. This earlier connection showcased Monash's knack for translating King's written terrors onto the screen. With Salem's Lot, Monash's experience in the horror genre was put to the test once again as he navigated the challenge of adapting a novel into a compelling visual narrative. Monash's involvement in both adaptations offers a fascinating insight into the evolution of King's works within the realm of cinema. His ability to capture the essence of King's narratives, whether it be the telekinetic fury of Carrie or the vampire-infested darkness of Salem's Lot, solidified his place in the pantheon of horror storytelling. As the credits rolled on Salem's Lot, Monash's dual contributions to King's adaptations stood as a testament to his creative prowess. The miniseries not only haunted the audience's dreams, but also underscored the significance of a skilled hand guiding the transformation from page to screen. Unveiling the enigmatic production of Salem's Lot, a behind-the-scenes look in the realm of classic television horror, the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot holds an indelible place, captivating audiences with its eerie atmosphere and chilling storyline. Beneath its surface, however, lies a lesser-known tale of meticulous craftsmanship and unexpected challenges that shaped the final product. Director Tobe Hooper's revelations about the makeup work on Reggie Nalder, who portrayed the sinister Kurt Barlow, shed light on the dedication required to bring this vampiric tale to life. In an exclusive interview, Hooper disclosed the arduous task of maintaining the makeup on Reggie Nalder throughout filming. The intricate makeup, essential to capturing Barlow's unnerving presence, proved to be a persistent hurdle. The makeup, designed to enhance Nalder's vampiric allure, often cracked or even dislodged during intense scenes. Hooper's team worked tirelessly to ensure Nalder's appearance remained as chilling as intended, a testament to the behind-the-scenes dedication that fans rarely glimpse. However, the ultimate test came during the film's climactic moments involving Barlow's coffin. Hooper recounted the challenges of executing the final scenes flawlessly, given the delicate nature of Nalder's makeup. Numerous retakes were necessary to preserve the continuity of Barlow's appearance, underscoring the meticulous nature of crafting a horror masterpiece. Beyond the technical intricacies, Salem's Lot also harbors a connection that bridges the wider universe of Stephen King's literary creations. Despite being only King's second published novel, the miniseries laid a foundation for the author's multiverse. The character father Donald Callahan, portrayed within Salem's Lot, resurfaces in King's sprawling Dark Tower series. This subtle link showcases King's early inclinations toward weaving his narratives into an interconnected tapestry, a hallmark of his storytelling prowess. As time rolls on, Salem's Lot continues to exert its chilling allure, forever etched into the annals of horror television. Through Hooper's candid revelations and the subtle ties to King's larger literary universe, the miniseries transcends its screen presence to become a testament to the meticulous craft and interwoven creativity that define iconic horror. And in an interview with Reggie Nalder, the actor who portrayed the eerie Kirk Barlow in the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, Nalder revealed the agonizing reality behind his chilling portrayal. The actor unveiled that the contact lenses and heavy makeup necessary for his role were not merely cosmetic conveniences, but sources of discomfort and pain. 
Nalder admitted that adapting to the extensive prosthetics was a formidable challenge, requiring substantial time to acclimate to the excruciating makeup regime. His commitment to his character went beyond the screen as he grappled with the physical toll of bringing Barlow to life. Director Giorgio Romero, recognized for his contributions to the horror genre, was initially slated to helm a cinematic adaptation of Salem's Lot. However, a confluence of factors reshaped the project's destiny. The announcement of fellow bloodsucking ventures, John Badham's Dracula and Werner Herzog's Nosferatu the Vampire in 1979, nudged Warner Bros. to reconsider the format. Opting for a television miniseries over a single movie, the studio's decision reshuffled the director's chair. Romero, renowned for his unapologetic vision, ultimately withdrew from the project due to the creative limitations imposed by network television. The prospect of compromise loomed large, leading to his departure and an altered trajectory for Salem's Lot. The 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot culminates in the fictional Guatemalan town of Zimico, a location that sparks intrigue due to its absence from the map. The town serves as a fittingly enigmatic conclusion to the tale. Yet the truth is that Zimico is a product of creative invention rather than geographical reality. While the series may conclude in the unknown, the impact of Salem's lot on the horror genre and its iconic moments remain vividly etched in the minds of its viewers. Whether wrestling with painful prosthetics, navigating the shifting tides of television production, or journeying to a fictional town, the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot is a testament to the interplay of artistry, adaptation, and the relentless pursuit of horrors unsettling allure. Ling allure. Ling allure. Ling allure. As we bid adieu to the mysterious town of Salem's Lot, let's carry with us the flickering echoes of its chilling secrets and eerie tales. Just like the faint glow of a half-remembered childhood memory, this 1979 TV miniseries has woven itself into the fabric of our minds, leaving an indelible mark that defies the passage of time. As the shadows lengthen and dusk settles, perhaps you find yourself reminiscing about those nights when the unknown lurked just beyond the corner of your vision. Maybe it's the palpable suspense that still tingles your skin, or the haunting faces of its characters that continue to dance in your imagination. In the quiet of the night, as you walk down the dimly lit streets, do you ever catch a fleeting glimpse of the Marston House standing tall and ominous? Salem's Lot wasn't just a series, it was a journey into the heart of our deepest fears and the unexplored realms of our own minds. It's a reflection of the darkness we all harbor, the secrets we bury, and the inexplicable pull of the supernatural that makes us question the limits of our reality. So, dear traveler through the tales of terror, take a moment to delve into your memories and share your thoughts. What scene sent shivers down your spine? Whose story did you find yourself entangled in? What was it about this series that forever binds you to its narrative? As the final embers of this discussion fade into the night, I extend my gratitude to you for sharing this contemplative moment. Your musings, like ripples in a still pond, remind us of the power stories hold over us. Until we cross paths again on the crossroads of another narrative, keep those memories alive and the discussions flowing. Remember, the darkness in Salem's lot may have retreated, but its essence continues to linger in our collective imagination, waiting to be rekindled by the lightest touch of thought. Farewell for now, dear reader, viewer, and thank you for your time and interest in this journey through the enigmatic Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot.